leagues. So basically, where does Starwind's hyperconverged platform come into play? We decided to get a solution for SMBs, especially small ones, we just start their virtualization journey. And for robos, like enterprise companies with lots of locations, we decided to fix a common problem these potential customers have in their environments. And these issues are ability to quickly deploy a solution for virtualization. It also should be able to solve the problem of operations management because in both SMBs and robots, this is a huge issue because there are multiple locations to manage, but there is no dedicated admin for every location. And in SMBs, there may be no one to manage because your CEO of a small company is also the IT admin, the accountant, and he also wears many other hats. So it can get quite complicated when we try to wear all these hats and also manage some sophisticated virtualization environment and all your IT environment altogether. And also we wanted to reduce the expenses for both SMBs and robots. We wanted to keep down the number of servers you have to buy to make sure you manage and maintain only the software and hardware you need not the one you were forced to buy or pushed to buy by big marketing campaigns from hyper-converged vendors. So the idea here is a fully integrated platform, but one not using some proprietary components and uh, custom-built hypervisors and other parts of the platform you may find on the market, but something which has the components you may already know, but pre-configured and set together in a way which is convenient for IT administrators to maintain and to manage. So in our hyper-converged platform, we have Windows Server, acting as the hypervisor. So it's Hyper-V, which a lot of our customers and a lot of companies worldwide have chosen as their hypervisor of choice. For the storage management, we implemented Starwind Virtual Sen, which allows us to treat the entire storage in multiple servers as a single full tolerant storage pool. We chose 5.9 as an easy and convenient tool to manage Hyper-V and to manage Hyper-V failover clusters. And we also took Veeam, and I'm not, I'm not sure I need to, ta to talk more about Veeam, but it's just the solution which was the best one for backup purposes. And we didn't really look for alternatives in this case. And of course, the whole hyperconverged platform would not be possible without hardware and our premier hardware partner is XByte Technologies. And uh, with that I would like to ask Ryan to step in and tell us a little more about XByte Technologies and hardware from XByte. Uh, excuse me, thanks a lot Max. Um, I'm excited to, to be part of this, this best of breed team. So for, for those of you who don't know who XByte is, um, let me spend just a minute here and kind of give you a little overview. In the IT community, we are, we are the number one recommended site for Dell servers and, and parts. Um, we've, we're ISO certified. Um, we've been helping the SMB and robo companies for the last 14 years. We've, although we're, we're 14 years old, we're still constantly growing. Um, we've been one of Florida's fastest growing companies the past two years. 
this year um, was the first year we tried for it. We're in the Inc. 5,000 fastest growing companies. We're not supposed to say anything yet. That comes out in a couple of days, but we're we're in that list. Um, so, and we're and actually something very exciting for us is we were recently named one of only two companies in the entire world that can change a configuration on a, on a refurbished Dell server, and then Dell will warranty in the configuration that we sell, starting from the date that we sell it. So a lot of great things about XBite, and our success is really because of our relentless dedication to helping customers, and, and, and that's why we've partnered with Starwind on this incredible offering. Now, I know what you may be thinking, is you, you just heard me say refurbish servers when I talk about um, what what Dell has given us is, is the ability to warranty those. Well, let me tell you a little bit about refurbished servers in the enterprise IT space. And then give me a second, wait for the slide to to, to move here. Um, a lot of people think of refurbished as something that was previously broken, and, and this phone is the perfect example of that something is broken, somebody fixes it up, and and you get it. Uh, and, and that's true in the consumer electronics world, but in the enterprise IT space, that actually couldn't be further from the truth. Um, what happens is that Dell will take their servers, and the, instead of if someone cancels an order, instead of taking it out of their, uh, their their manufacturing process, they continue to build that server. It's just more cost effective for them to do that instead of instead of inter interrupting everything. If you, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, Dell's manufacturing process is pretty incredible. So when that when that capital order goes through, it gets to this lot of, of equipment and companies like Xbyte, we, we buy large lots of those directly from Dell. Now based on our contract, we can't call them new, but these servers really have never been in production. And then, so, all of our servers, as you talked about before, they do come with that Dell warranty, um, but you also get the added benefit of having an XPI warranty. With, with this solution that we've worked with Starwind to create and, and our other partners, what this means to you is that Starwind can be faster in, in how they respond because they're the ones who, who pull all this glue together and they're your, they're your source for any support. Across anything in, in this platform, they're, they're your source. Um, and when they call up XBite, we can we respond very quickly because we're not a we're not a massive uh, we're not yet we're not a massive four billion dollar company so we can be a little bit more nimble. We help them out with that, but you also get the power of that Dell warranty behind it, so you really get the best of both worlds. You get the small nimble company be able to react quickly, then the powerful Dell when when needed. So let me go into to something real quick, and and, and we talk, we've been talking about hardware. Um, but also with, with any kind of uh, IT budgets, you, you have software, you have setup costs, you have downtime, and especially in the SMB and the robo space, those can really add up. I mean, you know, to, to, if, you're, if, you're, if you're down, I mean, if everyone in, the, in that company is kind of sitting around waiting for that, that server to come up, you, you may not have the, the VR solutions in place where you can just kind of spin up something at a, at a remote data center. So you need a solution that can really address all of that. And, and that's what we have for you here. Is we, we have this combined solution that Max talked about. And let me go into the, to how that works. We have an initial node, and this really is plug and play. So it, it's designed so that you, you and XBite, we we put all the pieces together, get it all set up for you. And then what happens is 5.9 comes in, and they custom set up that for your exact environment. That saves a lot of time in the beginning because when it lands, it is, as you see in the slide, it's, it's really plug and play. So that that gets there, and there's uh, you can you can start operating in, in day one. So that's a huge savings as far as I mean downtime. Of course, everything is bundled together, so you save the software costs, the setup costs are already done for you. So this is a really great solution to, to handle that, um, especially talking about this remote office, this small business world. Now it's not just this node though, so. We, we know that, that businesses come in, in multiple sizes. So what we've done is we've created three different packages. So and I'm not going to go into all the details here, but I just wanted to kind of give everybody a quick view of what they are. You, you have your small set, your, your S model, and that's going to be for those without racks. I mean, you, you see here it's a tower, multiple towers. 
you can even in, in the tower server, the S mode, the S model, you can still keep clustering these together. So it's not just where you're stuck. You're stuck at two nodes. You can always keep clustering things together and, and go forward. Um, so this is your S model. That you also have uh, your L model. So this is for the next level, next to your company. Um, again, you can keep clustering these together. This is based on the uh, the Dell R620 model. And then for those who have more IOP requirements, uh, may, may need more storage, you have the XL model. And this is based off the, the, the Dell um, 720XD platform. So you can see with, with the plug and play world, you really have a lot of options. When we say plug and play, um, you're, you're not really stuck with just a single platform. Uh, you, you can really can pick anything that works for you. Now, the beauty of working with Starwind as opposed to other uh, hyperconverged platforms is the fact that Starwind has a flexible architecture so that if you choose to need to scale up for any reason, you can take one of, our, one of the plug and play nodes and scale up for compute, let's say. So you can go ahead and increase from, let's say, a quad core to a six core, eight core processor, whatever you need by just scaling up that compute node so it, it, it's great for that. Again, it's, it's the flexibleness of, of the, the Starwind solution. So if you want to scale up with storage, you can also do that. So you can even you quickly add just memory. You can add hard drives. You can switch out hard drives. And now you've turned your plug-and-play solution to something more custom to really meet your needs. And, and, and that was you can do that without having to go buy a complete new, new unit, re, resetting everything up. You just switch out the hardware. Uh, and now you have that custom unit out there. You can also scale out. So one of the nice things, and one of the reasons why we we pick Starwind to partner with, is that their their architecture allows just two nodes to to achieve high availability and redundancy. So starting out that two nodes, but then you can scale out. So you can then add a, a third node to that um, as your business grows. You can add a fourth node to that. So this is all just taking those original nodes we talked about and scaling out. There's no customization necessary. Um, and again, Starwind sets everything up, it just arrives and plug and play and you're ready to go. And then let's say the business is transformed. Well, you're then able to, of course, scale up. And one of the nice things is that if you were to add any kind of direct attached storage to the Starwind platform, in, in that environment, you're not having to do that across the board. So you could take, you could have compute spread across four of the nodes, and then you just have storage across two of them. There's no problem at all from that. If you needed to, you'd always add two more nodes to that and scale up um, even further. So you you really have a, a lot of options um, with this particular platform to either take the plug and play units or to take it to that next tier and kind of customize it to meet your exact needs. So let me go ahead and let me pass it over to Max now. and he can he can talk about exactly what keeps it all together and, and what makes it work on a, from a software perspective. Okay, thanks, Ryan. And basically, we just have a lot of servers, and we need to make sure these servers kind of work together and they interact, and they also allow for some high availability and they allow some management simplicity. So software is what makes the hardware live. Of course, getting great service from hardware vendor was uh, a bit difficult when we initially came to big vendors, but Xbyte allowed us to do that. Now we're talking about what makes the platform live and what makes it so flexible. So a part of just Windows failover clustering working underneath just as a proven technology we already have so we don't develop something completely new and something highly let's say unconventional or sophisticated we use proven text to make sure we are able to troubleshoot it there is a big company supporting that which is obviously Microsoft, and that everything is really easy to understand for one who purchases the platform if he wants to get in-depth understanding of how it works. And uh, the storage management behind this platform 
something which allows us to actually use two servers and no additional dedicated shared storage is Starwind Virtual SAN. It mirrors the local storage of the nodes and represents it back to the same servers as highly available shared storage resource. But it's actually more than that. It also allows you to scale further seamlessly by adding three, third server, fourth server, and scale out to, let's say, 64 servers, which is current Hyper-V failover cluster limitation. But as soon as 2016 comes out, if that limitation is raised, Starwind is ready to take the challenge and raise HCPU limits too. 5.9 keeps everything smooth by allowing you to manage the entire cluster from one place and having a lot of additional capabilities. And Veeam does excellent job by keeping everything backed up. So if something really bad happens, you always have a point to restore to. Now, I want to talk a little more to the storage part of the system. So why we decided the hyper-converged approach? We could have done with an industry standard SAN, but we dropped it. The reason why we did it is speed. Because with a hyper-converged approach, we effectively bypass the three red arrows you see in the lower part of the screen. So with a traditional SAN solution, if we have a dedicated SAN, we see the virtual machine rectangle on the left and we see the disk rectangle on the right. We go from the VM, the IO goes to hypervisor, it then goes to initiator, it then goes to some sort of storage network, it then goes to the cache on the SAN, and only then it goes to the disk. With using use of Starwind and use of local resources, we effectively jump from the hypervisor right into the cache. And that cache is local RAM of the server where your virtual machine is running. And that cache is also the SSDs installed in that same server. So it's much faster than any type of storage network. Of course, it can compete with 100 gigabit Ethernet, but we're not talking about 100 gigabit Ethernet prices here. So that's the main reason why we decided to do it. The second reason is, of course, the flexibility and ease of use. Now, Starwind storage is not only flexible, it's also VM-centric. As we say, it's built for the virtual machine workload from scratch. Now, what happens when we have multiple virtual machines writing to the same storage resource, especially when that's a spindle-based storage resource? Everyone knows a term called IOBlender. It's something like a scary tale IT professionals used to tell when you start building your storage system. IOBlender kills performance. Yeah, so it's basically multiple virtual machines writing to the same storage resource are killing spindle-based spindle disk performance. We needed to fix that. So Starwind developed a log structured file system which doesn't use any commodity, sorry, any proprietary parts in the server. Instead uses local RAM and local spindles to accelerate random writes and get rid of IO Blender. So if multiple virtual machines, your basically your production environment starts writing in a lot of random writes, Starwind coalesces them into 16 megabyte chunks and then writes them to the underlying storage sequentially. Then, as a side effect, it can also inline duplicate everything. So, as a result, because we only write sequentially to the storage, we can use something like a SATA-based RAID 5, where we previously needed an all-flash solution or a RAID 10 built on 15K SAS drives. So we are able to use high-capacity, low-cost spindles and deliver astonishing performance from that. There will be a webinar specially dedicated to this topic, but I don't want to emphasize a lot on this yet. Now. 
of course this solution wouldn't be full without disaster recovery capabilities because there is a three to one rule in the IT world you need to have three copies of your data two copies on site one copy off site so Starwind also allows you to replicate to Azure or to any other disaster recovery location you decide to use. Currently we're offering replication to Azure for free so you only need to pay for the Azure compute powers and don't need to pay for Starwind and the functionality. A really neat feature for SMBs especially if you don't have a dedicated DR side. Now obviously that's all behind the scenes, that's all mechanisms behind the platform and there should be a lot said about the management part because that's what you essentially see on everyday basis when you get the platform, unbox it and put it in the rack. Everything comes pre-configured so management is the most I would say time-consuming thing you'll have with this platform say look at it for a few minutes a day or see the email notifications from the platform. Other than that you'll only need to spend time on your production and make sure that your applications are configured properly. The whole platform for it is already configured and working at 100%. So we chose 5.9 for a really great tool for management and it allows us to manage all the resources of our platform in one place. We manage our clusters, our hosts, our virtual machines, networking and storage here. It's a really easy tool. It can be installed on your computer or you can use it right on the hyperconverged platform host and it provides much more capabilities than just standard failover cluster manager, turning it into a real management center for the platform. Basically a part of just summary so you can log in and make sure that everything's running smooth, show it to your manager saying okay we've got everything up and running, we've got all virtual machines up, everything's running good. You can see all the system statuses, you can see different views. You can also customize everything and of course you can see the health stats for the individual VMs and applications. Everything in convenient form and within one management console. Then centralized cluster management is another part of it. So you don't really manage every node separately. No, we need to keep it uniform so you view the cluster information here. You can work with the nodes, put them into let's say maintenance mode if we talk VMware terms, pause, resume them, live migrate our virtual machines between the nodes, enable or disable virtual machine high availability if we want that. That's all doable here. Just right click on a resource and you've got the management options for it. Then we've got a really rich support for virtual machines. So natively we inherited virtual machine guest operating system supports for a lot of different systems. 5.9 supports all that and we inherited it for the hyperconverged platform. So you can see the range of supported systems here. Then you can also manage virtual SAN and networks from the platform and you can see the virtual machine checkpoints and manage them from the same window. And there is another neat tool I found really useful in our case is that you can not only RDP into the machine or open the console, you can also use free RDP for that. So that gives you a lot of options and a lot of additional capabilities for connecting to the applications you're running inside the hyperconverged platform. Then of course the solution provides a comprehensive monitoring for all the parts of it. It's 
for virtual machines it's for physical parts of the platform you can have customizable displays for the things you would like to monitor and of course you can look backwards to see how it was one week before two weeks before etc to make sure you know the history of your loads and see if you're actually using more resources or using less resources if you're running optimal or non-optimal everything's possible here all the disk alarms all the virtual machine alarms everything will be possible to view here then there is a really neat tool called resource library let's say you started spinning up your production and you need 10 windows machines resource library is a centralized repository for the templates you have for VHDs for ISOs for anything you may need and it's available from all HCP nodes so wherever you are on the platform you're will be able to get that template and get that necessary file and apply it that dramatically simplifies the life of administrator who is deploying the solution and exclude the possibility of a human error when deploying something because templates are good and the more automation you have the better then as a native functionality the platform has dynamic optimization of resources so it will be able to keep virtual machines distributed the way they evenly consume resources so you don't have overloaded nodes or underloaded nodes you always get maximum performance from your environment and of course you can have uh, multiple optimization groups for the platform that was partially inherited from uh, 5.9 and we're really grateful that this functionality is available for the platform and I think I really like and I even dedicate multiple slides for that is agentless antivirus something not all solutions can offer and I'm not sure that there is actually any solution which offers something similar so if in a nutshell 5.9 antivirus is able to unload your hypervisor and the entire virtualization environment from antivirus storms so sc scanning first time will take let's say one hour and then 5.9 CBT technology kicks in and you can scan your entire environment 70 times faster or even more depending on how many virtual machines are actually running then it also steals much less resources from the virtual machines I wouldn't even say it steals because at this point when it does the change block tracking scan it's almost momentarily I've seen it in reality and this technology is truly amazing it's something SMBs and robots really need because these are environment which are prone to issues with security and having a centralized tool which makes the security easier is a real must in this case so as I said first scan with a common file full system antivirus scan it will take same amount of time for any scan you do with 5.9 incremental antivirus scan your first scan let's say takes one hour next scans will take seconds and that is not for one virtual machine I would say that applies for all virtual machines at the same time and uh, a thing which VMware admins may found useful and interesting here is admin tasks logging so you can see all the actions performed on the infrastructure and observe them in the console and you can also see the processes happening within the platform and their progress 
a really neat tool to have. I really think Microsoft should add it into the next Windows operating system. And here's a question you may be asking yourself. Why cannot I build my own hyperconverged platform? I can take the servers, I can take the software, install everything together and get it all running in a matter of days. Uh, both yes and no. You can do so, but if you buy separate components, you don't get the same level of cost savings you get with the hyperconverged platform. That's number one, because the hyperconverged platform is about 42% more cost effective, and that's not including the added value I talked to on the next slide because it's not just the servers and the software you count. You get it configured, you get it tested, you get everything provisioned from the storage side, so you don't need to call a SAN admin or to dive into technical documentation for the storage. You have the main deployed, you have cluster created. Essentially, you just put it in the rack and you're ready to go and migrate your old production environment or to spin up your new production environment in the servers you just put in the rack. And also, Starwind here acts not only as a storage vendor and not only as a company who sponsored this webinar, but also as uh, a single support point of contact for the entire platform. And if you don't have your on-site support, Starwind can help here as well because we can also do a full services contract for your platform. So we can plan it, we can configure it for you, and we can also manage it remotely from our side. So you just need to call us, and we'll do whatever you need for the platform and for your virtualization environment. I would like to thank everyone for attending our today's event. I hope it was interesting for you and you found it informative. And should you have any more questions, please feel free to contact us at the addresses mentioned on the screen. And of course, you can learn more by going to our website and switching to the Hyperconverged Platform page. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.